While we were shooting this story, uh, Tim Pearson came up, and Tim is an honours student who's studying uh, bats and has turned a hobby into a possible career. Tim, could you give us an idea of what your research is actually about? Yeah, sure. What I'm going to be doing this year is looking at the possible effects of urban noise on flying fox communications. Um, as you can probably hear, they're very vocal animals. They rely a lot on this effectively talking to communicate in the colonies. And over the last 10 years, a lot of work's been done with birds. What researchers have found is that birds in urban environments with road noise behind them change the frequency of their calls and right. have to adapt to urban environments. No one's done any work at all with mammals. Would you like to uh, show us uh, what you've got in your hand? Okay, what I have here is what we call a parabolic dish microphone. And uh, basically, the idea behind this is it's very directional, so I can pick up effectively, instead of getting the whole soundscape of the colony, I can point it and get an individual ah, bat excellent. talking. And then I record it, and then we can analyse that. And by analysing those calls, uh, we can then have a look at whether there's urban noise affecting the animals or not by comparing noise from colonies that are very noisy to colonies that aren't. Right. Well, this colony, it seems to me, who doesn't know very much about flying foxes, that there's a lot here. Uh, what would you say the population uh, for grey-headed flying foxes is like at the moment? Well, it's one of those... The whole population is one of those things that we're not entirely sure about. The last reliable count, which was uh, around about 2000, that's the year 2000, estimated that there were about 400,000 grey-headed flying foxes left, and they declined by about 30% in the previous 10 years. Cool, that's now, a big decline. In the 10 years since then, we haven't done any accurate uh, range-wide counts, but from looking at the individual colonies and doing some rough comparisons, we know that the population decline has continued. So, Is there anything we can do in an urban area? Is there something we can do to uh, reverse this decline? Well, the big thing that's affecting grey-headed flying foxes is habitat destruction. It's, they're being forced more and more into urban areas because we're chopping down native forests. So the botanic gardens... Uh, banning flying foxes, you'd think that was bad? That's, I mean, this is the problem. As they get forced into urban areas, it gives people in urban areas the impression that there's more of them, but it's a sign of how much trouble they're in. Then, when we get there and decide that we don't like the colonies in urban areas, um, and we try and move them on, we're just increasing the effect on the flying foxes. Whether you actually like them or not, as a species, they're a critically important species because they do pollinate most of the gum trees on the east coast. Well, I was saying before that they're very good for genetics. Uh, like, is that your feeling that uh, sort of by dispersing seeds over long distances? Uh... Well, for the, they do two functions. One is dispersing seeds over long distances, and the second is pollinate, actually pollinating the gum trees. Most of our gum trees on the east coast need that long distance pollination. So effectively nothing else does it. So well. really if they don't do it, it doesn't happen. If, if the flying foxes go, our gum trees will sicken and most probably die out. Now it might take a while to happen, but it's, it's inevitable. Well, thanks for your time, Tim. That was really fascinating. No problems. Glad to be of help. Well, that's EnviroTube for this session. If you're interested in uh, flying foxes, and they're certainly interested in things because they won't stop talking. If you're interested in flying foxes, there's something you could do to help, and that's plant a bloodwood. Plant a red bloodwood, Karimba gamifera. They love them, they grow well in Sydney. It would be something that you could do to help the population. And from June 2011, it is Year of the Bat.